Hi everyone, this is the Module 1 Lesson 13 Homework Helper video. What I'm going to do is talk you through the first um, part of each of three questions to get you started and then hopefully you can do the rest on your own. This le lesson focuses on dividing numbers with decimals in them by uh, single digit whole numbers. People often feel intimidated by division. Um, division is the most difficult operation to think about. And in fifth grade, we really need to pay attention when we're dividing to uh, what the numbers represent. Um, and we're going to really focus on that while we go through this. So the question says, complete the sentences with the correct number of units, and then complete the equation. In the first one, A is three groups of blank tenths is 1.5. And then over here it says 1.5 divided by 3. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number 1.5, and I want to think about it in terms of tenths. So if I rename the number, and I'm going to use a um, number bond to show how, I have 1.5. I have one whole and five tenths. So the one whole, I can. I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it there and. Oops. I'm going to put my five tenths over here. Um, I'm just showing how the number can be split up by place value. Now, how can I rename one whole as tenths? Um, one whole is equal to ten tenths. Now, I don't expect you to um, do all of this number bond work while you're solving these problems, but you do need to understand what's happening um, in order to be able to show this. So, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to erase all of that, and I'm going to th just think of the one whole as ten tenths, like that. So now I'm thinking of ten tenths, and this number is 0 0.5. But I'm going to erase that as well. And 0 0.5 we also call five tenths. So, we see now that 1.5 is 10 tenths plus 5 tenths, so it's 15 tenths. Now, that's pretty interesting to me, because 15 tenths looks pretty similar to 1.5 holes. What we've done is we've had a place value shift. When I renamed 1.5 as 15 tenths, um, what I've actually done is I've looked at the number and I'm starting by renaming from the smallest place value here. So we have 5 tenths and 10 more tenths, or 15 tenths. Um, if I rename it, really what I'm doing is I'm eliminating the decimal point. So let's think about 15 tenths. 15 tenths, um, well, three groups of blank tenths is 1.5. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say that 1.5 equals 15 tenths. So how many groups, of, three groups of how many tenths would make 15 tenths? Um, well, let's imagine it was a whole number. So three groups of something means three times something and we know the something here is going to be expressed as tenths equals fifteen tenths so three times blank tenths equals fifteen tenths let's imagine for a minute that it's not tenths that it's bananas three times how many bananas would be fifteen bananas Well. 
one of my basic multiplication facts is 3 times 5 equals 15, so I can imagine that that's 5. Ah, well, now let's look over at the other question. 1.5 divided by 3 equals blank. Let's kind of think this one through from scratch. This one, I'm not going to do that whole business with the number bond. Let's focus on the numbers right in front of me. So 1.5 divided by 3. 1.5, how can I rename that into um, a more useful form? Well, I'm noticing that this is pretty similar to 15 divided by 3. But I can't just do that flat out because that I'm not allowed to just shift the place value of things. So let's rename 15. Let's rename 15 as a decimal number, as a as a um, a number with a decimal fraction. So it's 15 tenths. And how did I know that? Well, I look here in the tenths place and I see five tenths, and I see in the ones place one whole. One whole is ten tenths. So 10 tenths plus 5 tenths is 15 tenths. 15 tenths divided by 3. Um, this is a normal division problem. If I had 15 of something and I was dividing it into three groups, um, I could draw it like this. I'm going to make three rows, and I'm going to distribute numbers into them, or objects into them, until I have 15 in all. 12. 13, 14, 15. So I have three groups now. And I have 15 in all. So 15 divided into three groups means how many in each? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 15 tenths divided by 3 equals 5 tenths, because this is tenths still. Um, each one of those represents one of the tenths. Now, how do I rename 5 tenths as a decimal number? Well, it's 0 holes and 5 tenths. I know I talked about a lot of different stuff there, but the, the main trick is to, just like when we're doing multiplication or addition or subtraction with decimal numbers, we need to be thinking about the place value. We need to be thinking about what does it mean um, when a number is in a certain place. And with division, it's really helpful if we rename it as a whole number of, uh, of a unit before we divide up. So here, I took 1.5, I renamed it as 15 tenths, and then the division became pretty easy. I, with division, it's hard to avoid... Uh, using math language, like place value and tenths. So it's really important that we can get used to that, because if we try to talk around it, we end up just not being able to express ourselves clearly. Here's problem three, 3A. Um, it says, find the quotients, then use words, numbers, or pictures to describe any relationships you notice between each pair of problems and quotients. That's a lot of language, isn't it? Well. Let's, let's break this up. First thing we need to do is find the quotients. Quotient is a very important math word. It means the answer to a division problem. So if we are finding the quotient, we are solving a division problem and finding the answer. And then it says, then use words, numbers, or pictures to describe any relationships you notice between each pair of problems and quotients. Well, we have to solve them first before we can talk about the relationship between these two equations. An equation is the math word for a number sentence. 21 divided by 7. Well, I'm going to think of that as the turnaround of a multiplication fact. So, 21 divided by 7 is blank times 7 equals 21. So, what times 7 equals 21? I could count by 7s. 7, 14, 21. I had to do three groups of 7s, so it's 3 times 7. You'll see that memorizing multiplication facts is going to really just help you in fifth grade. We're going to use our multiplication facts just almost every day 
and if you haven't mastered them already, n now is really the time. So 3 times 7 equals 21, so 21 divided by 7 equals 3. All right, over to the next problem, 2.1 divided by 7. Think back to the last problem we did together. I'm going to, I did a lot of talking about it, so I'm going to just rename this quickly as a number of tenths, because my smallest place there is the tenths place. Uh, I'm going to underline it, there we go, well, let me try better. There we go, underlined it. That's the tenths place. So I'm going to rename this as a number of tenths. This is 21 tenths. And I'm dividing them into seven groups. Um, well, I know that, that I can rename that as, or rewrite that as mul uh, multiplication with a missing factor. So that means something times seven equals 21 tenths. Well, it's got to be 3, because 3 times 7 equals 21, like I just proved. Um, but, I've just made a mistake. It's not 3, because that would just be 21. It's 3 tenths. So, 21 divided by 7 equals 3 tenths. I'm going to write that as a decimal number, which is 0 0.3. Am I done? No, I am not, because I found the quotients. But then it says, then use words, numbers, or pictures to describe any relationships you notice between each pair of problems and quotients. Let me take a look at what we've got here. Let's zoom in. 21 divided by 7 equals 3. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. Here's the other one. 2.1 divided by 7 equals 0 0.3. Let's zoom out. What do you notice that they have in common? Well, here's what I'm noticing. 21 is 10 times as large as 2.1. And 3 is 10 times as large as 0 0.3. So, the number I'm dividing is 10 times as large in the first problem, and so is the quotient. So here's how I wrote that. The number I divided is ten times, as, ten times larger in the first problem, and so is the quotient. This doesn't have to be complicated. Just make some observations, see what you notice. I could have also said, in the second problem, it, the, both the number I'm dividing and the quotient are one-tenth as big, um, and th those mean the same thing. It's, it's the turnaround from each other. This is the last problem we're going to take a look at, problem five. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing with you, but I'm going to set you up to be successful with it. So problem five says a toy airplane costs $4.84. It costs four times as much as a toy car. What is the cost of the toy car? So what do we know? We know the airplane costs $4.84, four times as much as a toy car, question is asking me, what is the cost of the toy car? Um, so, I'm going to draw a tape diagram for this. This uh, tape diagram is going to represent the cost of the toy airplane. And from the problem, I know that the toy airplane costs four dollars whoops four dollars eighty four cents what else do I know it costs four times as much as a toy car okay so and that's what we're trying to figure out is what does the toy car cost now First question I want to ask you is does the which costs more the airplane or the car think it through in the problem 
it says that it costs four times, that it, what is it? The toy airplane. The, the toy airplane costs four times as much as a toy car. So that means the airplane costs more than the car. So if the price for the car that I find is greater than $4.84, I know I've made a mistake. Now, the toy car is going to be, uh, is only going to be a fraction of the price of the airplane. So I'm going to draw a little tape diagram. Now, the question though is how much? If it costs four times as much as the toy car, uh, sorry, if the airplane costs four much times as much as the toy car, that means that if I were to divide up the price of the toy airplane into four pieces, one of those pieces would be the same price as the car. Now, let's think this through and make sure that I'm right. The toy car costs something. The airplane would then cost four of those somethings, which would add up to $4.84. Does that fit? Toy airplane costs 44, and that's four times as much as the car. It does fit, because if I went here, this piece would be the same as that, and one, two, three, four. So this, the whole thing is four times as much as the car. So good. Now we need to set up some math. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to set this one up for yourself and then and pause my video while you do that, then come back and check if see if I saw, set it up the same way. Okay, hopefully you've done that. So, what I'm noticing is that we don't know this. That's going to be my blank. And I'm going to use multiplication here times four, because there are four of them, equals the cost of the airplane. Now, how can I solve this? Um, well, I could use division. So, the cost of the airplane divided by four, whoops, I wrote equals, divided by four, I've got an extra dot in there some now. somehow, divided by four, ah, got it, equals blank. So, the cost of the toy airplane divided by four equals the cost of the toy car, which should be written in, uh, as, as an amount of money. Don't forget the units, otherwise I'll think you mean bananas if you turn it in that way. I'm not going to solve any more of the problem for you. Um, I'm going to remind you that probably the simplest way to do this is to rename this number as a whole number. Hmm, it's not going to be tenths, though, because I see I have another place value here. So tenths, it's going to be whatever that is, is what I'm going to rename it as. So it's going to be some number of whatever place value that is. It's hundredths. They're hundredths. Who said that? Um, yeah, don't, don't listen to that guy. Make sure that you think it through for yourself. And then we're going to divide that number by 4. And that will give you an answer, I think. Um, double check me. Make sure I'm right. Well, that's all the help I'm going to give you today. I hope it was enough. Um, and I hope what I had to say was clear. Um, and we'll keep working on division next week. Thanks.